So welcome to this week's dose of the A to Z of Pilates and in this video I'm going to be talking about five types of exercise that we need to be thinking about building into our routine, particularly as women as we approach midlife and move through midlife and beyond. These are sort of things that we need to be perhaps thinking about adding into our routine. But before we get started, what I want to say is that you don't have to suddenly add all these things in. You know, it's all about working at a level that feels right for you, perhaps picking the things out that you feel um, perhaps you need to focus on um, or you want to focus on a little bit more and building up gently. And if you are suffering from pain or an injury, um, then obviously take it step by step. But you might want to get some advice on how to build these in and what is the best way for you to move forward with your with your exercise. So this week was the letter X. If you're wondering why we're talking about exercise, I had to use a little bit of poetic uh, license with the letter because there's not many things that begin with the letter X. Um, so we went for, for exercise. So if you don't know me, I'm Zoe. I'm a physiotherapist and Pilates instructor and founder of Pilates Health Online. Pilates Health Online is all about helping women to get back into exercise, enjoy exercising again, build confidence, um, basically so that we can do the things that we want to do. So let's dive into those five things or five exercises that we need to be sort of thinking about um, building into our routine. So the first one you probably uh, you know probably aware of is things that working on our muscle strength. So we want to make sure that we are maintaining our muscle strength as we as we move through our life. And one of those things is if we don't use the muscles, then we get a little bit of weakness in that area. If we're not using them, then we, we tend to sometimes can lose a little bit of that strength. So this might be um, important if you've had a sort of any injury, perhaps, and you need to build muscle strength in a, in a particular area. But just working on our muscle strength in general is really important so we can move around so that we can do the things that we want to do. But working on muscle strength doesn't mean that you have to be weightlifting. We can use our body weight. We can use our uh, in different positions. We might be getting weight through um, the arms or using our arm strength a little bit more. Um, we can use exercise bands. We can use, um, if you're doing Pilates, the magic circle, which I've got on the mat behind me, um, or anything that's adding in that little bit of resistance perhaps into our workout. And I talked a little bit about um, resistance work. Um, a couple of weeks ago so you can always go back and have a little look at that video but the other thing that research suggests is that working on our strength particularly our leg strength can actually boost our metabolism as well so if we're looking for ways perhaps to um, maybe to lose weight or just to sort of speed up our metabolism a little bit then actually working on our strength can actually have a, an effect as well so two for the price of one and keeping our muscles strong is going to protect our joints and it's going to make us make it easier for us to move and do the things that we want to do. So the first thing is working on our muscle strength, but it doesn't have to be weightlifting. It's anything really that are getting getting those muscles working and again, working at a level that's right for you. Now, the second form of exercise is working on our bone strength. Now, this is something that we perhaps don't really, really think about. We don't think about working on our bone strength, they'll perhaps know the best way to go about doing that. But particularly as women, as we again move through midlife and beyond, working on our bone strength becomes increasingly important. And the reason that is, is that oestrogen, our female um, hormone, has a protective effect on our bones. So the way our bones um, work is that all the way through our life, we have new bone being laid down and old bone being reabsorbed. And in an ideal world, we want that nice balance. So the amount being reabsorbed and the amount being laid down is pretty, pretty even so that we maintain that bone strength. Now, in our early years, what happens is that we get more bone being laid down and less being, reabsor less being reabsorbed. That's right. So what happens is that we build our bone density, our bone strength in those sort of early years. Now, because oestrogen has an effect on our, and, and has that protective effect on our bones, as we go through the menopause, our oestrogen levels drop. So we lose a bit of that protective, um, the, the protective aspect that it has on those bones. So what can happen is that that balance gets shifted a little bit and we perhaps have a little bit more of bone being reabsorbed than being laid down. 
Now, what that opens us up to is the risk of a lower bone density. So things like osteopenia or osteoporosis. Now, it doesn't automatically mean that that is going to happen. So first thing is to say, I don't want you to worry. Um, but it's something to be aware of. And if we're aware of these things and we can do things to help, sort of help boost our bone, our bone strength, then all the better. So actually working on our muscle strength, what we've already said, can actually have an effect on our bones because where our muscles attach to the bones, the, um, the body knows that those, those muscles need a good anchor point. So by using the muscles, our body tends to lay down more bone in that area of the muscles that we're using to make sure those muscles have a nice, strong anchor point to work from. So it is important that you that you build up gradually. You don't just suddenly go into heavy weights or anything like that. Um, but ha doing some work on our muscle strength can actually have an effect on our bones. But the other thing to think about is weight bearing exercise. So exercise is basically where we're getting weight through the joints. And it doesn't just have to be standing. It might be getting um, weight through the arms, so maybe on our hands and knees, or if that's not comfortable, maybe up against the wall. Um, exercises that are going to get a little bit of uh, weight through those joints. Um, and again, building in a little bit of muscle strength as well. Now, what I would say is that if you have been diagnosed with osteoporosis or osteopenia, then there are maybe some modifications that you need to think about when you are exercising to make sure that you don't put certain joints or your back under um, too much strain. Um, there's lots of exercises that you can do and exercise is beneficial, but we just need to make sure that we're doing it in a way that's going to, um, you get the best out of the exercises. And I have done a short video about Pilates and osteoporosis a few weeks ago. So again, that's something you can go back and have a look at if that applies to you. So, so far we've said muscle strength and bone strength. The third thing is looking after our heart, our cardiovascular health. And again, that is really important as we move through midlife um, and beyond. And I think some of the cardiovascular exercise can be quite challenging if you've, if you've been diagnosed perhaps with pain or you've got joint problems, it becomes a little bit tricky. And I think we always think about cardiovascular exercise is perhaps high impact stuff, running or jogging or perhaps jumping around, things like that. And obviously that is going to get your heart pumping, but that's not going to be the right form of exercise for everybody. So there are lots of ways that we can build cardiovascular exercise into our routine. It might be that we um, perhaps alter the way we're exercising. So we perhaps increase the speed that we're doing something a little bit without getting that extra impact. It might be moving our arms and our legs at the same time. But again, we don't have to be jumping. We could just be doing different forms of sort of movement. And that can all help to get the heart rate going. So it's perhaps thinking about ways that you can do that um, and incorporate exercises that are getting your heart pumping a little bit um, in a way that's right for you. But I, what I don't want you to think is that all cardiovascular exercise has to be jumping, running, things like that. There are lots of ways that you can build that into your routine uh, in a way that's right for you. So definitely doing something that's looking after our heart. Now, the last two are probably things that you might not think about. So the fourth thing is looking after our pelvic floor muscles. Now, our pelvic floor is like a hammock or a sling of muscle that sits underneath. So it comes around from our pubic bone at the front round and underneath sort of to our tailbone at the back and what it does is it draws up from underneath and it's those muscles that stop us passing water and wind so it's that sort of that sort of um that feeling if you like now these muscles again sort of work automatically and they support our pelvic organs now, the reason we all, I, we all need to be doing pelvic floor exercises because if we can keep those muscles nice and strong, it's just like any other muscle in the body, it's gonna give us that nice support. But again, if we go back to thinking about what happens as we move through our midlife and beyond, oestrogen again has this lovely effect on our pelvic floor that it keeps it nice and supple and nice and elastic. So as we move through perimenopause, menopause and beyond, again, because our estrogen levels drop, we lose that sort of, um, 
that effect that it has on our pelvic floor. So we can lose that sort of stretchiness, if you like. And our pelvic floor is just like a muscle or just like any other muscle. If we're not using those pelvic floor muscles, then they can get a little bit weaker. If you add into that having babies and other things, then, then obviously um, we need to make sure that those, those pelvic floor muscles are still nice and strong. Now, I'm not going to go into in this video how to get the pelvic floor muscles working, but I can do another video that talks through that. Um, but the other thing that I would say, if you have um, any specific problems, so if you've been diagnosed with a prolapse, um, or perhaps you get a little bit of leaking, um, then always go in and get some advice, have a chat with your GP. You can, there are pelvic health physiotherapists who can to go through these pelvic floor exercises with you so that you can feel confident that you're doing them in the, in the right way. But I think it's something that we don't always talk about. So if you do have problems or you're not sure, definitely go and get some advice because by doing some pelvic floor exercises, it can really, really help. So the last one, I said the last two were things that perhaps you wouldn't think about. The last one is um, doing something that helps you to relax, unwind and manage stress. And that is really, really important. And I think it should be, um, you know, a non-negotiable. It should be something that we all build into our routine because we all lead stressful lives. Um, I'm perimenopausal at the moment and I have noticed myself, I can get very anxious, I get very stressed um, and doing things to manage my um, anxiety and stress is becoming increasingly important. So I think it really is important for, for everybody to be doing things to help manage, um, manage stress. Um, but it's doing, again, things that you find relaxing, things that you find helpful. So it could be that uh, doing some breathing exercises, just stopping, taking a couple of deep breaths in, just feeling the shoulders relax and then carrying on with, it, with what you're doing. Just helps to just calm the system down. It's like turning down that dial. Um, it could be going for a walk. Getting outside in nature has been proven to have lots of positive effects on our mental health. Um, so getting out in nature, having a look at what you can see, what you can hear, the different smells, getting the senses working, that can really help as well. But it might be other things that you find uh, help you sort of switch off. So um, for my mom, she loves to crochet. So I know that when she does that, she sort of switches off. She's focused on what she's doing and she gets absorbed in that. Um, and that can really sort of help sort of switch off. So there might be things like that that you find that when you do, you get so absorbed in what you're doing, you, you forget your worries, you forget what else is going on. So sometimes having a bit of a list of things that you find helpful um, can be really, really beneficial. So if you are feeling stressed, you can, you can go to that list. But trying to build that into our routine. So we're doing something every day that is helping us just to, to relax and just take that edge off um, of our stresses. So those are my five tips of things to build in. We've got working on our um, strength, working uh, muscle strength, sorry. We're working on our bone health as well, keeping our bones nice and strong. Thinking about ways we could perhaps build in a bit of cardiovascular exercise into our routine. Exercises to work on the pelvic floor, keep the pelvic floor nice and strong. Um, and definitely, definitely doing things that are helping us to relax and unwind. And what I want to say about all of that is yes these are things we can add into our routine but there's no should so if you're sitting there thinking oh my goodness you know how am I going to add all these things in it's all about taking it one step at a time thinking about perhaps what's most important to you at the moment and adding that in first doing what you can starting where you are now and I know that sounds daft but think right what am I doing now what what is the one thing or a tiny thing I could add in just to maybe start getting my body moving or start adding some of these things into into my routine just do that see how you get on with that and then if you think right I want to add in the next layer or I want to add something else in then add that next thing in take it step by step build up gradually if you have got an injury, if you're suffering from pain, if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, then definitely get some advice on the best way to do this and what to focus on and what, what to build into your routine and the best way to do it. Um, and as I say, take it step by step. There's no should you should be doing this or you should be doing that. It, everybody is different. 
everybody um, is coming from a different place and everybody wants to get the um, different things out of, of exercising. The one thing, or well, the two things I would say when it comes to exercise is do something and pick something you um, enjoy to do. Because if you don't enjoy it, whatever it is, you won't stick to it and take it at your own pace, build up, build up gradually. And as I say, if you're not sure, get some advice because uh, as physios, um, there are other health professionals out there as well who can help you and guide you on the best way to, to build this into your routine. And obviously as Pilates instructors, we try and build all these things in um, to our, our classes and things as well uh, to take the thinking out a little bit for you. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you have found it helpful. Um, if you've got any questions, pop a, a comment below. If you like these uh, videos, make sure you hit subscribe. I would love to um, have you as part of our, our community um, and you'll get notified as soon as these videos come out. And if you want to hear a little bit more from me, you can sign up to my newsletter. Um, and again, there should be a link above or below this video. So, Thank you for joining me for another session. Um, next week, we're on the letter Y. So we're going to be talking about something to do with that. Um, and then we've got Z as well. So it'll be interesting to see what we do for that. So I hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, any questions, pop a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you next week for another video. Take care.